this guy was sitting across from me one day and he just looked at me and we go, he said, are you who I think you are? I said, Batman. And he said, yes. He said, oh, do, <laughs> do the voice, do the voice. So in the middle of this crowded subway, <laughs> being the ham that I am, right? <laughs> I did, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Mm. <laughs> the subway completely freaked out. You know? <laughs> I feel like, who is that madman? <laughs>
Oh! <laughs> and and I could even top that. I know there's no Andrea Romano doll, but why not though? But there is a Kevin Conroy doll. Oh, you had wow. that. You gave it to me. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> stuff. That was like um like what was that? 20 years ago, 15 years ago? A while ago. A fan wow. made that for yeah. me. Wow. And made, made a Kevin Conroy doll in the packaging. Yep. And made it look like a real doll, a real, you know, yeah. commercial well, product. I was ask so where to I, get one. I ordered, I got back in touch with the guy and I said, can you make me a dozen of those and I'll pay you? And I gave them to Andrea I got one. and Bruce I got one. and various so people as, as Christmas presents that year. It was so Perfect. funny. It's perfect. Oh. The Kevin Conroy doll. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us. As always, we look forward to the day when we can once again host you back on our GalaxyCon physical stages and get you in front of your fans. But in the meantime, we had this electronic forum called the GalaxyCon virtual stage. And we are so glad to have you here all today. Thank you for having Great me. Great to be here. Thank you, Jeff. And before I begin, I just want to say as a lifelong fan of these characters, thank you all. Uh -huh. You ha you have honored them, and that is a credit to all of you as actors and behind-the-scenes productions. So I thank you all for your talents. I thank you all for your professionalism, and I thank you all for your performances and proficiency both on both sides of the recording booth. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank that you. was Absolutely. part of the fun. that was part of the fun of doing this show was every week going in and meeting more extraordinary actors and working with more extraordinary actors. It was oh, just yeah. it was just. Every week was someone else that you was you were a fan of. It was amazing. John and I have worked together for like the forty years, thirty years, something like that. The first thing we did was the Kennedy miniseries, mm -hmm. and then we did the George Washington miniseries, and we did a <laughs> season at the San Diego Old Globe Festival. Right, right. Festival. That's what I remember the most. We've we've yeah. known each other for many, like 35, 40 years, something like that. We so to run, in, to run into actors like that that you could work with is just incredible. Absolutely. That's a, I, I was actually going to be my opening question. Uh, this series was recorded troop style, which, <laughs> and it's, it's so fascinating too, because uh, uh, the public perception is that that's the norm. And it may have been at one point, but even at that point, it was starting to go into solo actors coming in. But uh, Andrea, this probably starts with you. Um, where, what, what, what was the impetus for the decision to do it troop style? I love that term. I've never heard it called troop style before. Yeah. Ensemble yeah. record is the way we used to refer to it. But it yeah. was, um, I'll tell you, it, there's a very practical reason for it. And that practical aspect is if you run a scene once and then you run the scene twice and then maybe do a handful of pickups and then just for the heck of it, run it the third time with all the actors there acting and reacting, which is such an enormous part of acting, yeah. you know if you have the scene or not. If I'm recording every actor individually, I have to record so many options to see what will cut together you know, two weeks later when we get all the rest of the actors. So the practical reason was it was faster. The artistic reason was it allowed us all to play together and um, not just react as, as one would, but if I brought in a guest star that say Kevin didn't know and Kevin's playing Batman to Joe Schmo's evil villain guy and Kevin's never heard this guy before, in the session together, we find the voice for the villain. Kevin gets to hear what he acts like, react to him, and we create that all together ensemble. Same thing with Diane and Lauren, of course, and John, of course. Every time they come into play, they get to hear what everybody else is doing, and that can tell them kind of the, the quality, the, the style of the of the recording so that they're not doing a different show than everybody right. else is doing. Yeah. yeah. Acting is as much about reacting. And if you have the other actor there in the booth with you, it just makes your performance so much richer, so much totally. better. Totally. You know. It's more I, fun too, frankly. And it's, it's a lot fun. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I've never, I was, I didn't ever do voice. I do, I, I'll, but, but, but somehow, you, first you, I did a Animaniacs and a right. Shiny Pants. <laughs> <and then, laughs> Peek in the then, brain. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but, but I, because I didn't know anything, but there were all these people there and some of them were fabulous and I kind of tried to do my best, but it was always fun. And the, when I came to do the, the 
Batman one. I mean, I was only there three days, three of those right. days. So, and, and, and I never saw it because it was a kid's cartoon and it was on Saturdays and I did other, <laughs> other things. So, I mean, well, I one kid, I heard his feelings when I told him all this, that I, it didn't mean the world to me. I was trying to explain <laughs> how I was now seeing how it was so important. And he just turned around and walked away from me. <laughs> now you know, though, don't you, John? You've been doing yeah. Comic Cons in person throughout the country. Right. You can get a good yeah. sense of yeah, how important this was to people. Well, I feel honored now that it happened. I didn't think before. I didn't know why you were hiring me in the first place. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I want to address that because I knew Lauren as a voiceover actor. I knew Diane as a voiceover actress. And so when I hired them, I hired them because I knew they had the experience behind the microphone and they would know what to do and they would follow my direction. I hired you because I've seen enough of your work. I had seen at that point enough of your work to know that you were a good actor. I can teach you about voiceover production. I can teach you about um, how not to pop, how not to um, have wind on the microphone, how not to overlap. I can teach you that in a simple four-hour session when we're doing a session. I can't teach you how to act in a four-hour session. So I hired you because you were a good actor. And, and, Andrea, was there, was there someone that you went to bat for that maybe uh, other people did not see the value of, but but you saw and you were proven right? Well, tons and tons, actually. And I don't yeah. want to embarrass anybody by saying that. But uh, in, a, in a, a weird set of circumstances, when I brought Tim Curry in to play the Joker for me initially, I loved his performance. It was terrific. It was really I good. I thought he was I mean, wonderful. Yeah, he I was did wonderful. too. And yeah. I, given, you know, left to my own devices, I would never have replaced him given the directive. And, you know, it's my job to give producers what they want. And so yeah. if a producer says we want a different Joker, I did everything I could to save that job for Tim because I loved him so much. Yeah. And I hate replacing actors ever. And so I, we tried and we couldn't make it work. And, uh, and then I was lucky enough to get Mark Hamill who had reached out to me and said he wanted to be a part of the series and it worked out beautifully because he's a terrific Joker and a great actor and wonderful to work with and everything. But yeah. that was one of those instances where I didn't win the battle, where I said, Tim Curry can do this gig. There's just, but, you know, sometimes you get a producer who just doesn't like a voice. It's not that he didn't like Tim Curry. He just didn't like the voice that Tim was doing. And we have to give the producers what they want. That's our job. Indeed, indeed. Well, I, I, I think by the, these amazing actors here and by everyone else who can't be here today, but I wish they could, I, I, I think your batting average has, has, <laughs> has def, definitely proven proven your judgment. Thank you. Um, and, and again, as a fan, early on when reading about these series, the first thing I saw was the little bits of art. So, okay, the little, okay, they're doing a Batman cartoon. Of course, the movies. Uh, it's a cute design. But when I began in the, the fanzines, hearing about the castings was like, oh, okay, oh, uh, Richard Mall's Two-Face, that's nice. And then Mark Hamill. The one for me that did it for me actually was Paul Williams as the Penguin. For yeah, some reason, yeah. when I read Paul Williams, I thought that's pro and that also kind of set off, there's something going, and this was months before the show debuted, like there's something dangerous going on <laughs> yeah. with this. And it's like rules are being broken and I'm really excited for this. That, that was brilliant casting. By the way. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, what happened after a while was word got around. Actors started telling their agents and other actors they were having a really good time on this yeah. new Batman series. And you should, you know, if you can get your agent to get your you know, name up there. And so I started getting lists of people who wanted to come and play. And Paul was one of them. And so when the casting came up for the Penguin, I was like, ooh, he already said he wanted to play. There's probably a better chance that he'll say yes rather than going cold calling somebody and see if they'll come play. So that worked out perfectly. Did uh, did you court Michael for uh, Mr. Freeze? Or was he just... Do you know, I'll tell you a quick story about that. Michael and Sarah came in to play Mr. Freeze for us and I thought did a wonderful table read and a terrific recording. And at the end of it, Bruce Tim leaned over and said, I'm not... I'm not feeling it. I'm not like, I said, okay, let's release the rest of the actors and keep him after school and work with him because mm -hmm. we had an extra hour in the studio. And so we stopped and let everybody go. It's just so that he wouldn't be embarrassed revoicing the whole thing in front of the whole cast. And Bruce was able to give his specific notes and I was able to put in my two cents. And then in about, 
20 minutes, we recorded all of his lines again, and it was wonderful. And I, I know you guys like Mr. Freeze because we've talked about it before. It's it's such a wonderful performance. It's so, oh. um, it's not deliberately monotone. It's not deliberately, I have no feeling. It's just yeah. so, and Bruce was absolutely right. There was a nuance he was looking for that I hadn't, help the actor capture yet and when we spent more time he found it and you know our episodes and even the isn't sub-zero a mr freeze movie oh, story yeah and he's wonderful in that he was yeah. just a wonderful man to work with i was very happy performance. but again performance. i didn't want him to be replaced i didn't want bruce to go oh just it's not working we'll get somebody else i thought no this guy can do it this man can give us the performance mm -hmm. we want this is the actor for the job let's mm -hmm. just spend a little extra time and and kevin tells many stories about me whispering, you know, can you stay after school and cover that, you know, thug too, because the last guy just wasn't. And, uh, you know, often you keep actors after school, but it was never meant as an insult. It was always, yeah. let's make sure your voice sounds the best that we can make it sound. I never mm -hmm. wanted an actor's voice to go out sounding embarrassing or something they wouldn't be proud to tell their friends to watch. So Michael was a one you went to bat for and did. proven for a I did, I did. I did. I did. And again, and, and again, this is, this wonderful collaboration that you were all a part of, uh, you know, like, like with Paul Diddy and Bruce Tim, and then and the visuals and the writing and everything else, this show, there's a reason why we're still talking about this show decades later. Wow, uh, now hearing this too, thank you, Andrea, so much for calling, on, calling me in. I'm yeah. so glad you came to play. Well, I'm so glad you said this, yes. All this today about, I mean, just the voice, see? Because I, I need to, when I do a character, you know, the hair has to be this way and right. I should have a beard and da 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 and right. my shoes. But this is just your voice, just right. your voice. Right. But, but yeah. John, you bring all the acting skills. I'm sorry, Kevin, go ahead. John, didn't you find that, that it's, it's, it's even more liberating to, yeah. to be well, just, the, just the voice? Well, when, I was, I'm in the, when I'm in the booth and sort of living in my own imagination as the character, I feel so much freer. Well, that's what I, I that. felt that day. Somebody said is that one of the cons when we were talking to, when we could touch people. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the smells the most. But ah! um, <laughs> <laughs> do the rhythm voice. And I said, well, that's what you're getting right now. That's all I did was just have fun talking because I was so smart. I, thought, yeah, that, I, mean, I couldn't have been, but I could act smart because it was a smart script. Right, and it was a smart yeah. character. He, you know, he was really yeah. on top of it. Yeah, yeah but he was so smart. Why isn't he rich? Yeah. Wow. I love that title. <laughs> I you went, there. That you went there, didn't you? Sometimes. Yeah, I had. Yeah. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm the yeah. nerdy fan surrogate here. Yeah. I have to. <laughs> oh. Okay. But, God bless you. No, thank, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Someday I hope to grow up and be a real boy. Uh, <laughs> Patty? Yeah. Patty, may I just say one thing? Absolutely. Can, can anybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Can, can anybody hear me? Yes, we yep. can. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You yep. can? Yes. We hear you. We hear you. Okay. I just want to say that we're having mic problems with me, and that's why you're not hearing more vivacious and fascinating stories from me. So that's why. So that's why I'm sitting here and just smiling warmly instead of actually engaging. We we hear you perfectly oh, now. Great. Tell yeah. us a story. Did Tell you us get a story any of that? Yeah, all of yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Tell us a story. No. Yeah. No, yeah, no. We hear you. Yeah. yeah. We hear you. Oh, tell you a story? Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, I think I'd like <laughs> to tell. Uh, but yes. Oh, wow. uh -huh. I want to thank Andrea Romano. Let me audition for the part of Poison Ivy at a session where I was hired to do a small role and where the actress who was supposed to do Poison Ivy didn't show up or couldn't do it or got fired or whatever. And she asked me if I was interested in auditioning for it. And I said, sure. And then I looked at the script and I knew the Latin voice and I got the job out of nowhere. And here we all are 27, 28 years later. <laughs> oh my God. 
The gift yeah, that keeps on giving. Yeah. <laughs> Diane. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let, let me ask everybody this. What's what's been what's just been a treasured memory that you have taken from this from the entire Batman experience? Well, I have I have I have a question. I've never asked this at any of these panels. And I think it's time to ask it because every every fan that communicates with me, and I know probably with all of you, they ask the same question. They say, why is it that they're not doing more episodes of the show? And this was a big part of their lives. We're all still alive. We all, we all still have the same voices. Why is it, maybe Andrea, maybe you know the reason for this. They, they've revived stuff going all the way back to the 80s, you know, some god awful stuff going back to the 80s. <laughs> why, why is it that, they, that the powers that be and the fans ask me this all the time? Why aren't they reviving the show and doing it again? And I, I think would be very surprised, Lauren, if at some point they don't ultimately do that. But what their the various powers that be have decided over the time is they the properties are too valuable not to continue to use the properties. But for whatever reason, they'll say, OK, we're going to base this on this graphic novel. And the art style of that novel is completely different than Batman, the animated series. So to go with that, we want completely different voices. And they've done that about. 30 times. You know, I, I know that, yeah. but what, what, what Patty asked, which, which triggered me to, to ask this at this point, you use the word treasured, and that's people yeah, yeah. really treasure yeah. this show and treasure the voices and the look and the storylines. You're, and the way you're preaching to the choir. I'm no, so no, with no, you. No, you're I absolutely know. right. Yeah. And I don't know why they don't, and I wish they would, because it was special. It was really yeah. special then, and yeah. I think it can be updated to be <clears throat> equally as cutting well, edge. Well, yeah. uh, an an Animaniacs. Right, new, exactly. New version. DuckTales. 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 Maybe those come back after it, being gone. So, yes. Yeah. We can all... The fans yeah. need to make a point of saying we want the original Batman to come back in a new incarnation. Uh, the the way what the, what the fans need to do is they bring back bring out the cast and bring back the creative talent behind the scenes as well. Right. Yeah. Is the is the new uh, comic book series that Paul Dini is doing? Is that isn't that based on Batman the Animated Series? Yes, uh, he and artist Ty Templeton are doing a really good job of sort of bridging the continuity of the animated series and all the storylines that have gone on in the Batman comics. So we've seen Jason Todd version of Robin become the Red Hood, and it's it's been a, it's been a really good really delight to read. He's done because a really good first, job of bridging the first um, uh, comic book that he wrote. Uh, to launch it, uh, he asked me to read it on on an Instagram as a live uh, feed. Me, yeah. And and did you saw that, Andrea? Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was excellent. And, and it started. And I said, "Do you want me to read all the characters?" He said, "Oh yeah, yeah read the whole thing." And I thought, "Oh my god, this is like <laughs> an actor's playground, right?" Absolutely. So I was doing this character and that character, Batman, Bruce Wayne, the commissioner, the villains, everything. Fun. And then there was this drunk socialite who comes on to Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. It's like, oh, Bruce, you know, it was great. So I really hammed it up. So Dietrich Bader calls me right afterwards and says, we love the drunk <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. So when you did the voices of like Commissioner Gordon, did you do like Bob Hastings kind of voice or you know Harvey? what I changed? I tweak I tweaked them a little bit because when you're doing all the voices and you want to make them distinct, like um it had um Two Face. It had uh what's his right. name? Um, um Richard, what's his name? The uh the um, Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent. Yeah, Harvey okay, Dent. Right, right, it had Harvey Dent in it and uh I, I didn't, I, I, but I also had to do Alfred. Uh -huh. And so I couldn't do Harvey Dent as the, the, way, the way I would new, normally do Harvey Dent. I'm sort of lockjawed, you know what I mean? But so I did him that way, but then I couldn't do Alfred the way I would normally do him because it would be too close. Right. right. So I made Alfred more like a Cockney, more like the, uh, the Alfred oh, cool. from, yeah, from, yeah. from right. Gotham. I did right. him like the Gotham back. You know, yeah. so I changed them just because I wanted them all to be distinct. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was I'll fun. Bet. I'll bet. And you did it all as, as it was happening? 
I did it like this. Yeah, I was just, sitting yeah. in my living room <laughs> reading it. I love it. Okay. So, it was so know. much fun. It was so much fun. The DZ, so, so Lauren. Going back to my original question that says uh -oh. been all this way too. What's been your favorite what's been your favorite uh favorite oh. memory being being in all this? Oh, uh, I think uh this was discussed at the very beginning of this conversation was going in every week and seeing these incredible actors like I will never forget walking in and seeing Roddy McDowell. Yes. Yes. I'm like, I, wait, I'm going to do a show with Roddy McDowell who was part of the great uh, golden era of cinema. You know, yeah. that's my thing. I'm crazy about those old movies. And you walk in and there's Roddy McDowell and there. And then of course, uh, Effie, we all remember Effie, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. Yes. You know, he was such a part of my childhood on television. And it's like, wow, I get to work with Effie. And, he, and I remember I remember him saying to me, I said, oh, it's such an honor to meet you. He said, oh, just call me Effie. <laughs> <laughs> So dear, what a nice man! Yeah, dear man, nice and, and so Bob, lucky. And Bob Hastings, I mean, just what a yeah. what a great guy in so many things. When I was a kid, and to to work with him, so uh, that that to me is the all those people, you know, the most cherished memory. All the wonderful people that I got to work with. Yeah, and Adam they, West, Adam West. Yeah, yeah, I didn't work with him. I was in that episode. Oh, you were in that episode. It was a no, remarkable no. episode. The <laughs> Great Ghost nice. is one of my favorites. Nicest just, man in the world. Did, did you all uh, going in there? Did you did you know ahead of time? Oh yeah, the next week we're working with McDowell. It was just you walked we, in. We didn't know. We, we didn't no, know. I would I never tell the actors. I didn't know until I walked in. I wouldn't tell them. Really? I'd, them. I'd send but, them the scripts and who they were playing. You know, if they were doing incidental characters as well. But I didn't send. I didn't tell them who the cast was. But oh, I, you I, devious <laughs> mastermind! You. I, I, I always knew when I walked in if I was working with Mark Hamill that week, because there would be one microphone stand that would be standing yes, up, yes, would sit down, yes. and they'd be standing up and go, "Oh, Mark's in this week." Mark's here because Mark always recorded standing up, or a lot of people right. are totally comfortable sitting down. But he just couldn't do the Joker sitting down. He, he had to contain himself. He, he, couldn't, he really couldn't. Himself. He needed to stand he would up. Knock over the you know the sound yeah. stuff. Right, yeah. exactly, the baffles and stuff. Wow, yeah. fantastic. Uh, John. The thing, the, oh. oh, John, do, do you go, John? What? No, what has been most fun for you about doing Maybe this? Andrea. Look. Oh, thank oh. you. <laughs> yeah. We became yeah, we friends. Have, we, have, we have dinner sometimes together and stuff we like do. that. Yeah, it's, I, I think so I much about the people that I cast and especially those of us that end up working together for years and years on various projects and you truly do bec all become oddly enough my children. That's I worry right. about you. I worry about your careers. I worry about where you are in the world. When somebody calls me up and says, I need one more gig to make my SAG insurance this year, they can count on me to find, you know, thug three that needs to do three lines of oof and ugh and Batman so that they can get their their insurance. I, you're all so dear to me. And a lot of that I think comes from the fact that I was an actor first. And so I appreciate everything you guys do every day to be actors, working <laughs> actors. It's just so hard, but I, I adore you all and you are my family. And so that's uh, that, that to answer your question in my thing, it's all about these dear friends and oh. knowing them for years. And Diane, I've read <laughs> Diane's books and I love reading her books that she writes. And we've chatted so many times at various comic cons, just sitting next to each other and filling in our lives with what's going on. And we become like a big family. And I, I think that's as it should be. Yeah. Andrea, whenever, Whenever I bring up, bring you up uh, on these panels when I've hosted uh, these actors you've all worked with, there's a reason why I refer to you as as Saint Romano, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody agrees. Yep, totally, yep, hundred yep. percent. It's yep. it's a mutual admiration society. I have to say, I respect actors, and they respect me, and we have fun, and we get the job done. And and I have to say, it's been three years now since I've worked, and I do miss it. I do. Not, you know, it's weird the way it's being done now, but the fact that you guys can continue to work during a pandemic is a remarkable thing. And um, and to me, the personal ensemble record having everybody there like a Thanksgiving dinner, family together, laughing, talking, joking, getting the work done, being done, laughing, talking, yeah. joking. If that were still happening, 
I would be probably asking to come back. But you think about what a voice director has to do now, sometimes to get one 22 minute cartoon recorded, they have to be available an entire day, 12 hours to get that guy from there and that guy from there and this connection there and that guy from there. And that's way they had too much time. That's just hard. Well, I still make 22 minutes anymore. I think so. I think yeah, there's still some forty-two. Yeah, no, they they do, they do. Yeah. But they're going to the small. Well, but so. why can't they? Why can't you? Since we're all in our homes now, and we all have these incredible, you know, recording studios, why why is it that we can't uh, record uh, animated series as an ensemble now? Is there any reason? Sometimes it can be done. It depends on what how many time zones we're dealing with, how many oh. what kind of connection people has. For example, if we were trying to do this today. Diane would have be having trouble. We'd have to work out a, a stronger connection for her. And I'm so sad because I know she wants to talk to us. I know she's got many things to say to us, and it's just killing her. But I hope she's hearing everything we're saying and how fond we all are of her. I think so. <laughs> Diane, Diane, how you how you doing? We'll give her a three, two. One. <laughs> there you go. Yay. Yay. Okay. Good. Going to. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to, okay, and I don't know when my voice is coming vis-a-vis -vis my face. Right. We can it hear probably it. Sounded, yeah. And you're really irritated. No, no. no. Right? Yeah, nope. we can hear it. You're good. Okay. We can hear so you. So hearing it, I want you to know that working with Mark Hamill on my right and Ephraim Symbolist Jr. on my left, left gave me a high that no drug could have given me. <laughs> between two amazing, brilliant pros, I got normally okay. trade jokes with Paul. I got to, and of course, Arlene, um, Harley Quinn, who is a very dear friend of mine now, um, she was such a joy to do Harley and Ivy stuff with. Such a joy. Shine up to you. You are the best voice director I have ever worked with. And I have Thank worked, you. oh, for 45 years in voiceovers. So that's wow. quite a compliment. Thank that's you. That's what darling. I wanted to say. Thank you. Oh, and Thank way, you. I really miss the in person Comic Con. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I can't wait to get invited back, Patty. Wait until COVID Me is too. Over again. I know it. It's so special to meet the fans in person. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and and Diane makes a good point about another thing about this show's okay. impacted legacy. Uh, it was the it was the birthplace and gestation of the character of Harley Quinn. Right. She she yeah, did right. not she did not exist in the comics and really? in the comics of Bruce right. Wayne. And now she uh, uh, Jim Lee himself said DC has. Four. It used to be oh. three primary characters: Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Now it's a quadrology: Batman, wow. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Harley Quinn. Wow! wow. Very yeah. cool. I just wow. read that DC is also coming out with a Hispanic character for Wonder Woman somehow yes. in, this, in that, and also was it a gender fluid character for something like a Flash? What what, what they're what they're doing is it's called five G, and it postulates uh, about. 10, 15 years in DC's future after the modern heroes have gotten older, they've had kids, they've passed on the mantle. So yeah, there's a great diversity uh, uh, socially, racially, gender-wise, whole nine yards and various new permutations Neat. of the character. Good for them. Cool. Good for them. Cool. Isn't it? Yeah, Isn't it? Correct. I thought that was cool too. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, so Kevin, bring us home on my question. And you've been doing this for a long time. Wow. What's, what's, been, what's been the treasured memory of, of having Batman in your life? I think or that you, maybe the really, man having you in his life. Yeah, the exceptional memory has been, um, and one I didn't anticipate because when we started it, it was a totally anonymous job because it was before the internet. So no one knew who the voices were, who the actors were who did the voices. Of, I don't know who Fred Flintstone was from my childhood. You know what I mean? But, um, but now people can Google and um, see who it is and discover you. So... I started getting recognized in the street, you know, living in New York, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be crossing the street and a police car would do its siren. Like I was jaywalking. And I thought, Oh my God, they're not going to give me a ticket in New York. This is crazy. Everybody jaywalks. <laughs> and then I'd hear over the loudspeaker, pull over Batman. 
And, <laughs> and they I roll down the window. That. They roll down the window and say, "We want our picture with that man." That's so cool. <laughs> that kind of stuff started happening. Or on the subway, this guy was sitting across from me one day, and he just looked at me and we go. He says, are you who I think you are? I said, Batman. And he said, yes. He said, oh, do, do the voice, do the voice. So in the middle of this crowded subway, <laughs> being the ham that I am, right? <laughs> I did, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Mm. <laughs> the subway completely freaked out. You know? <laughs> I feel like, who is that madman? <laughs> they thought I was a crazy man. Of course. <laughs> but then the people started whispering, and they said, no, that's the guy who does Batman. That's the guy who does Batman. So everyone lined up with their cameras, their phones, oh, and wanted to have pictures taken. It was a, just such a New York moment, you know. That's yeah. great. Um, that's so funny. that kind of stuff I love. I love. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, a reminder to our audience, if you'd like to chat with our panelists like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And yes, Diane's signal for private chats will be much clearer than it is now. I promise that earlier because we ran it earlier. We got some audience questions, so I'll ask you to roll our first one. And this comes from Rob V. Ooh, do any of you have a dream role you'd like to share? Oh, I think everyone's dream role is the role that they're just about to play. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> There's always another dream role you want to play. I mean, yeah. Sure. Well, I want to do a Prospero before I, while I can still remember lines. <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about voice acting, my dream role, I've played my dream role and I would love to play it again. And that's Nightwing. I think that's like the, uh, the, the dream role for me. And you got to play it. That's so great. Mm -hmm. Everyone froze. That's so cool. I'm not seeing anybody. Yep. What was that, Lauren? Uh, you froze. I didn't hear it. Nightwing. Nightwing. No, I said Nightwing. Nightwing. Got to play. Oh, Nightwing. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Batman yeah. is kind of hard to follow. I mean, that's yeah, kind of like no everybody's dream well, role. You know what I mean? And, and, and again, the night, the, the really again, the really nice thing is we got to see yeah, your version would, of Dick Grayson I evolve would, um, on stage. Right. Oh shoot! No, Diane, go go ahead. Keep going. Diane? Um, my, my dream role would be a stage role, and I'm a little bit past it now, but Imama Rose from Gypsy. Oh, Gypsy. Oh, good oh, one. Good I, one. I, I, you I, could I, play that. Did you Mama. hear me? Mama. Yes, hello. My dream role. Mama Rose. My, good one. My dream role is a stage role, and it's Mama it's Rose Wow, what Gypsy. a role. Yeah, yeah good one. Role. Yes, yes, very no. good. Yes. Yeah. No. Absolutely. We all give thumbs up. Uh, I'll yeah. buy. I'll buy a ticket. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to do. Yeah. I'd love to do a musical. I've never done a really full blown out musical, really? and I love. I love to sing. I've sung in plays, but I've never done a musical. Kevin, I, be, I, be a lot of fun. I sing off key, and I replaced the the man in the chair in the in the drowsy chaperone. So right. I got to be on stage the whole time oh. in a real big Broadway musical and never sang except right <laughs> at the end. Right at the end, and I would usually start on the wrong key, and you could hear the woman down in the piano in the pit going da 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 da. da, da, da. <laughs> and I still couldn't hear it. But what it show? Matter. What show was that, John? Drowsy, Drowsy Chaperone. Chaperone. Drowsy it's Chaperone. The man in the chair is he creates this this musical, and uh, yeah, so good. I, this is one great. of the best was I've ever had. Was Harriet Harrison that? No. No? Okay. She's brilliant. She's one of the best actors around. But she was in my class. She was in my class at Juilliard. You Juilliard people. Yeah, yeah. I know. Kevin. What a class. What a class. I was so intimidated. I went to Towson State Teachers College in Baltimore. So I had to deal with all of this. You know, I was from this school and that school and this, Yale. And I was like, oh, okay. Kevin, Kevin, if you can grow a beard like John, I'd love to see you do uh, Coyote, uh, the Man of La Macha. Oh, oh, oh good yeah. one. I had a beard up until about a month ago. I let it grow in, and it was red, red. Yeah, I look yeah. like an I look like an Irish pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Andrea, what's your dream role, either in front of an audience or a role behind? You know, I always I, one of my very favorite musicals ever is uh, A Little Night Music, oh, yeah. and I thought oh, yeah. there was uh, what's your name, 
what is her name? The character's name, Madame Armfelt. I can't think of her name. She you know, character I'm talking about the one who sings. I love what's it. the name of that Sending, character. Sending the clown. Yeah, she's in the, the clowns. Yeah. To go. I just, I know, I know. Um, but that, that I just, I, I love that musical. I got to see lots of wonderful pl people play that role, and I just thought that would be so much fun. And no. I'm probably old enough now. <laughs> uh, 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 Rob, thank you. Great question for this panel. And here's one from Bethany. Ah, uh, what have you all done to keep your sanity during this crazy time? I want to answer that right away because I have I have it gardening, and of course I live in Southern California, so you can garden year round. But that was where I could put all of my energy, yeah. and suddenly the backyard is fantastic. I have all this time to water and plant. I just put in the winter vegetable garden, so we'll have romaine lettuce and broccoli and artichokes and all kinds of stuff coming up soon. But that's a wonderful way to to keep sane. Yeah. I've been gardening a lot too. And every morning I go for a three mile walk. That, I do that too. I and I know too. Andrea, you do that too. Yep, yep. Uh, that's it, been it, so important to get out, so of, so get out so of my own head. You know? Absolutely. The, the problem with the question is that it assumes we've kept our sanity. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah that's some true. days are better than others. Yes. Yeah, I think we all find that. Yeah. yeah neat. Up, and how can I do? How can I make today different from yesterday? Right. right. Nothing to do. Right. I, I suggest to drinking heavily. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> yes. oh, no. you, you have emptied that glass about five times already. Who's filling it up for you? I will get some during the break. I'll get some more. It's Prosecco. It's my favorite drink. Prosecco. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a great line in Downton Abbey where Maggie Smith says, what is a weekend? I and I keep <laughs> thinking I'm living mine because the weekends are yes. just running in. Yep. All the days are just running into each other. They are. They are. The, yeah. the months, the, the year has gone by. And because we don't have that much weather here in California, it's really yeah. day after day of the same yeah. right. beautiful weather. I, You know, it's 80 degrees outside today. Who are we to complain? What is it like in New York, you guys? We have the seasons. I know. I, I don't know. know. I do I miss know. the season. I do. But is it cold there yet? Is it already cold? It, it's in New a York? little chilly. It's a little chilly, but it's the perfect time. You put on a jacket and you go outside, and it's sunny. Oh. And the air is nice. clear. It's just nice. a little chill in the air, and it's beautiful. Oh, that's mm. great. So definitely, Diane. How have you been keeping your keeping your sanity? Uh, did you? Yeah. Did you yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Yep. Take your call. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Oh. Yes. I have been, I have been nonstop reading. I have oh, been good. reading and reading and reading and reading. And Wonderful. that's what I've been doing. That's oh, joyful. Great. It's fantastic, great. isn't it? Reading is that's so great. good. I'm reading the Frederick Douglass biography right now. It's fantastic. I'll bet. It's fantastic. Excellent. What an incredible character he was. My God. Oh, absolutely. I didn't absolutely. know he was like a polymath. He was a genius. I didn't realize that. And he started that. out as a slave. Right. So yeah. all of this was self-taught. Right. He went from zero to a thousand on his own. I mean, it's extraordinary. Uh, we're just yeah, slugs, sorry. aren't we? We're just slugs. We it's do nothing. Extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bethany, thank you so much. That was a wonderful question. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the cast and crew of Batman the Animated Series. Panelists, any final words for our audience before we go? Thank we you, love you all. We love you. Thank you. Yes. And where, Come where visit are us. And wear a mask. And wear, wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. It's so wear easy. The mask. That's good. Thank you, John. Thanks mm -hmm. for reminding us. Absolutely. Uh, it has been my absolute pleasure to serve you all here today. Thank you once again for joining us here at the GalaxyCon Virtual Stage. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. And thank you for all those great questions. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And please keep washing those hands. Woohoo! talk so fast. I know, really fast. See you, everybody. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.